Hey guys, and here's the man who needs no introduction, although I'll give it anyway, which is I'm Poohhead189, and uh, I'm here to talk about Game of Thrones. Next weekend is going to be a monumental weekend in media history. There will be Avengers Endgame, which is the culmination of over 11 years of Marvel Cinema, and there will be the longest episode of Game of Thrones, which also happens to be the longest battle sequence in media history, and it will air on Sunday. For Endgame, I'll make a video for my review of it when I see it, and I highly recommend IGN's spoiler-free review in the meantime, but people came here to listen to Game of Thrones predictions and you shall receive. Firstly, I'll start with the battle outcomes, and then I'll tackle the character deaths and who was most likely to survive. Now this wouldn't be Game of Thrones if there wasn't some weird or heart-wrenching twists, particularly in an episode like this, so the ending of it will not be a straight-up win or lose. Assuming you've seen episode 2 of this season, you'll have noticed that throughout the entire episode, Cersei nor the Night King was shown. Even at the end of the episode, we saw a line of White Walkers and no Night King. This means it is entirely possible that the Night King will not be present at the battle. I'm not saying it's likely, but it is possible. Or he will only show up near the end. This also might imply that Cersei and the Golden Company will appear at the battle, or at the aftermath to destroy whoever the winner's supposed to be. Cersei is working behind the scenes of this next episode, you can be certain of that. Yet, unless HBO makes a very rash and, in my opinion, stupid decision, she is not the main threat of the entire show. The Night King is. And since he is not shown in the episode or the trailer for Episode 3, at least explicitly, other than a very blurry image, that just might be Daenerys on her dragon. It is also entirely possible that the main force of the White Walkers simply bypasses Winterfell, and the entire battle fought in those 82 minutes of screen time is with a smaller force. In Season 7, Danny tells Jaime that there are a 100,000 Whites at least. And even if we're being generous and saying that there is only a 100,000, the Battle of Winterfell can still be monumental on screen with 35,000 or 40,000 whites and a few dozen white walkers attacking. It's also important to note that in no episode of this season, and so far there has only been one episode with her in it, that Cersei outfits or even tells the Golden Company that only dragonglass weapons could kill whites. Will the Night King show up in King's Landing on his dragon instead of at Winterfell? Doubtful, as the trailer shows Cersei crying safe in the Red Keep, which probably means she hears news of Winterfell's destruction, and that news would take days or weeks to reach her. Uh, and assuming the Night King wins, and he most likely will, or else the next three episodes in the series will have Cersei as the final boss, how will the characters escape a fall in Winterfell? And some have to, or else it will be Cersei versus the Night King, and even Game of Thrones won't have the ending be two villains fighting in a post-apocalyptic Westeros, as metal as that sounds. Also, if people recall the last season, Melisandre is to return at some point before the show is over. She could appear at the Battle of Winterfell, helping them to turn the tide, or at least helping them escape. She could even ride in a battle with the elephants Cersei was expecting, though I'm mostly just joking about that. But this coming episode is the best episode for her to reappear in, and it is also the best episode for her to die in, as she said she would back in Season 7 when talking to Varys, whom she said would also die in Westeros as well. And now that brings me to the characters at Winterfell. Who is most likely to live and die this next episode? Tyrion won't die, though there might be a small exception I'll talk about later. HBO is smart enough to know that if Tyrion died, there would be a marked drop in viewership. Tyrion should be safe, as well as Jon Snow, and Daenerys, and Samuel Tarly. Sansa will live as well, as well as Arya. All of these characters are arguably the main characters of the show, other than Sam, who is known for surviving everything that should kill him. Out of these characters, I would expect Arya would be the most likely to die, but she still needs to see Melisandre before the Red Woman dies, as Melisandre predicted they would meet again back in Season 3. The Hound will also live, because he needs to fight his brother in Clegane Bowl. The next tier of survivability has Podrick Payne, as well as Tormund and Ed. They are the only people of their factions or professions left alive. The only squire, the last wildling, and the last man of the Night's Watch. Out of these three, Ed is probably the most likely to die, though who knows, if he is to die, it would be fitting he would die fighting the White Walkers. Gendry will also probably live. Arya fucked him, he didn't fuck her, and he's the last of House Baratheon. He will likely survive. 
Now let's talk about the elephant in the room, and no, not the war elephants. The Crips. People keep spewing that the Crips, where the women and children and non-combatants will be, will be the most dangerous since they are filled with corpses. No one seems to recall that the corpses are both likely completely decomposed, and also every corpse buried there is encased in fucking stone. It's honestly a silly theory, though I can definitely see the women and children being creeped out by the wailing of the dead in their resting places. However, since this is Game of Thrones, I know the show is not above the retconning the crypt layout and making some corpses be less buried than the others, though no previous actors or actresses like Sean Bean or Michelle Fairley or any of the other actors of previous seasons have been noted to make a returning cameo. Although, as Varys and Tyrion will be down in the crypts, it is completely possible one of them could try to play hero. And though I believe that Davos will likely survive the Battle of Winterfell, this is the one time where he could die, because the little girl who reminded him of Shireen will be in the crypts, and he would definitely risk his life to save hers. He would also definitely risk his life to save Lyanna Mormont, just as Jorah would. Although, um, honestly, I still believe that Davos has a very good chance of surviving. Now, let's talk about the Lannister brothers. I know I mentioned Tyrion earlier, but I did say there was an exception to him dying. Now, both are likely safe. Jaime has had too much character development and too little Cersei slaying to die at Winterfell, as does Tyrion. However, there is an outlier, which is namely Bronn. It would be just like Game of Thrones to have them both surviving the battle, only to have one of them dying in front of the other after Bronn shoots one with a crossbow complete betrayal, utter heartbreak, just how Game of Thrones likes it. Now, I'm not saying that Bronn will kill them, but if either of them die, it will be probably because of Bronn. And now finally, we're going to talk about people who are more than likely completely screwed. Brienne is going to die. Her character arc is over with, and she will need to die in front of Jaime. However, if Jaime sees her dying, he has 38% more plot armor to survive Bronn, because he needs to live with the anguish of her death. My nigga Beric Dondarrion is next. I hope he lives, and you'd think the Lord of Light kept bringing him back for a purpose, but it was likely just to play Obi-Wan for Jon Snow in Season 7, and now he's likely to get fucked trying to fight the Night King. Same with Jorah Mormont. He's back to his Season 1 wise and cool uncle vibe, and now that he no longer seems to be pining after Danny and he's at his peak, he's likely to get killed, particularly after Sam gave him a gift. Finally, Theon and Bran. Both will likely die. Theon's redemption arc is done, though he does have a much higher chance of surviving than Bran, because the Night King will go balls deep trying to kill Bran, and the heroes will be lost without him, which is why he's probably going to bite it. The only people we have not mentioned after that are Ghost and the Dragons, and Nymeria. I have no idea if any of them will die, but I certainly hope not. Oh yeah, and Dario Naharis will totally show up again at some point this season and will likely betray Danny. Anyway... I hope you guys enjoyed the predictions. Game of Thrones is always tough to predict, but we'll see what happens when it does. Thanks, guys.